Well, it's never a dull moment here at Gordon's Garage. We, uh, let's see, Toyota Sienna van came in this morning with a coolant leak. You can see some pink stuff back in there. It has the pink, this system has the pink antifreeze. It's leaking out of a hose T back there, so. I'm gonna pull this box, all the breather box out so I can get to it. Didn't we have a Toyota earlier this week or last week? I think we fixed the Toyota earlier this week, didn't we? Leaves and stuff in there. Let's see. I'm not explaining tell you how to do this because I'm not sure how to do this yet. Sometimes you just got to feel your way through these things. The air box the air top, air intake, there's the air breather, maybe we'll blow that out while we, we got it out, just to, <clears throat> got a few leaves and such in it, okay. Rest of this thing out of here, maybe. It's so dirty. I think I'll just pull it out and empty it of the leaves and stuff that is, that are in it, is in it, however you say. Plus, it will open up a little more access. Lay that over to the side. Now you see. Right down in there. That's the heater hoses. The hoses that actually feed your heater. So those T's are leaking. Just plastic tees, so over time they'll start leaking. They'll crack and stuff. So what happened is this. This is the T right here. And you can see it's not a T any longer because it broke here off into this hose here. So the broken end of it is in this hose. So it was like that, but just barely hanging together. So that's where the leak was coming from. But there's two, two T's there side by side. I'm only gonna go ahead and replace both of them while we're in there because they're both plastic, and surely the other one is right about to break as well. So we'll get both of those replaced and they, they won't have that problem again. All righty, while I'm out getting parts for the uh, Toyota Sienna, uh, 
stopped by Northern Tools and got the new fender mount lights for the 58. Already got one installed, but not wired yet. Um, so I'm gonna work over here for a couple hours and then get back to the little Toyota. But we'll try to get the, the blinkers working up here on top of the fenders. And then for the headlights, I'm gonna try to get, at least get those wired and get uh, the headlights plugged in and make sure all that's gonna work. And then for down here, we're missing these pieces. We're gonna go ahead and design our own. We're gonna go ahead and cut a metal piece out and design our own. And then I bought these reflectors to, to go in there. And we'll put a, a light bulb behind it, maybe adapt this square body uh, light pocket, socket, cup, whatever you wanna call it. Um, Here's, here's the original right here that fits, it fits in there. It's a, it's like a clear reflector type of material that sits in there and has a light and it's obviously missing an amber lens. I think those were just parking lights. As small as that bulb is and it's just one filament in there I think it's just parking and the blinkers were up top so that's what we're working on okay so we got uh, we got the headlights working low beams high beams one bulb out over here we got the blinkers working I showed you that earlier there's Harry there's Fred okay so I'm back over here at my shop with the Toyota, picked up some tees, and these are uh, PEX plumbing tees, but they're brass. That's what I usually use when I replace a plastic tee on a vehicle. These are brass, they won't corrode real fast, and they have these ridges already made onto them, so your hose will grip that really nice when you clamp it. And they're not really expensive. They're like three bucks. So, and then I usually get my clamps at Lowe's or Home Depot because they usually have heavier duty clamps for plumbing and they're stainless steel and you can't hardly strip them out. Most of the clamps you get at your local auto parts stores are just weak they strip out easy they rust these won't rust and they'll just last so anytime you need good clamps go to go to your plumbing section of your local Lowe's or Home Depot or hardware store whatever you have in your town get these old clamps off of here we're not going to reuse these squeezy clamps because they they lose their tension over the years after they they're heated up and cooled down and heated up and cooled down five million times they're just no good anymore you can use them But it's not real smart to use them. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I like to do the smart thing.
That's because I've... That's because I'm experienced in doing the stupid thing. So I've learned that the better thing to do is the smart thing. Alright, so usually these clamps are 5 sixteenths socket or an 8, 5 sixteenths or an 8, they're both pretty much pretty close to the same. Clamp there. There's a clamp there. And I'm using the original hoses. These are molded hoses and they're really in pretty good shape still. We could, I mean, it would be the difference. And if we bought all these hoses, it would be probably a couple hundred dollars versus just a few bucks for this for the the T to replace the T and that's really the problem it's not the hoses the hoses aren't the problem the ho these hoses will probably last the rest of the vehicle the the life of this vehicle they're very top quality hoses and they're just in really good shape still so I'm not replacing them I'm not going to do that to my customer now I bet you some of the heater hose that you would buy at your local auto parts store is so low quality heater hose that these original hoses would outlast the hoses that you could get, the quality hoses that you could get locally. You just can't get quality anything anymore. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. Don't even get me started. For this job, I didn't have to buy any new hose. I keep enough hose laying around. The only thing I had to buy was the T's and the clamps. And I think I had seven, eight dollars into a bag of clamps and I'll have some left over, and then $3 a T, so that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 bucks into the parts. And I'll have less than an hour into actually repairing the vehicle, so. You can't hardly beat that. And I'm, the reason I, I'm replacing this section of hose is because I had to cut it off. So it wasn't good anymore. So I know I said that I wasn't replacing the hoses, but this little piece I am. T replaced. I'll move on to the to the second one. These little squeezy clamps off. Yep, squeezy clamps. 
They work good until you have to squeeze them. Now, see, there, that T hadn't broke yet, but if you see this little white ring around there, it was already starting to crack and coolant was already starting to seep out of it as well. So same on this side. It wouldn't have been long before that cracked as well. It's just what happens to any car, whether it's a Toyota or a Honda or a Kia or a Hyundai or a BMW or a Mercedes Benz or a Chevrolet or a Ford or a Dodge. Doesn't matter. It's going to happen. Everything wears out. Throw these squeezy claps in the garbage so we're not tempted to use them again. Except I'm having a hard time hitting the garbage can. Alright. Now I need three more worm clamp, worm drive clamps is what these are called. Okay, so. Right. So there's what the repair looks like. Where is it? Right there. Old brass and stainless steel. Two T's replaced. Should not ever have another problem with that. So we'll just we'll put the air box back in, top her off with coolant, crank it up, test drive it. All right, so she's running now. Got her all back together. No leaks yet. Hopefully there won't be any, but we're gonna go test drive now. Put down. Hopefully I didn't leave any tools under there. I think I did. Usually I wouldn't do anything like that. All right, I got my phone. I know I have my phone because I'm filming with it.
another test drive out of the old Gordon's garage. Hopefully we fix something again. We really like it when we fix things around here. It don't happen often, but when it does, it feels good. Things sure are green. I'm happy to see that. It seemed like it was a long winter. It really wasn't a cold, cold winter. It was just a wet winter. I put my seatbelt on or this thing's going to scream at me for the whole drive. this van in a couple weeks ago and did an axle repair on it. I think we filmed that. I think we YouTubed that. I don't remember. Let's go back and look. It's a good riding van. Hundred and eighty seven thousand miles. It's just getting broke in good. So, I guess I'll put about 10 miles on it and make sure nothing's leaking out from under it or overheating. Since we did a coolant repair, I like to put enough miles on one so I know that the vehicle owner is not going to leave and have troubles. Love these traffic circles. We've never had those in the south until recently. I mean, in the last couple years, they started putting them in everywhere. It's the answer to all our problems. It even cures Corona. I know because I don't have Corona and I use traffic circles. So there has to be a connection. My drink is rolling around on the floor everywhere. Okay, today, so far I've got all the little, the uh, headlight, the new headlight adjuster. Uh, I can't think to talk sometimes. All the headlight adjusting hardware is installed. So that will adjust the high beam and the low beam. All those were rotten and broken off. So better get everything mounted back properly. Both sides 